and welcome to Adaptation, where we talk about film adaptations and the original material they're based on. I'm Kendall Bryant, and I am finally getting around to doing a request that we had quite a while ago to cover Cheaper by the Dozen. And I have to apologize because for the life of me, I can't find the comment, so I don't know who to give credit to. But comment below if it's you. The book Cheaper by the Dozen was an autobiography about the Galbraith family, which, as you may have guessed, contained 12 children. It was published in 1948 and was quickly followed by the sequel Bells on Their Toes in 1950, both of which were a collaboration between two of the Galbraith children, Ernestine and Frank Jr. The bulk of Cheaper by the Dozen kind of focuses on the antics of Frank Sr., who was such a vibrant character that it's sometimes hard to believe this book is nonfiction. Frank and his wife Lillian were both industrial engineers, essentially efficiency experts, and the bulk of the book is Frank using his 12 children to test out different ways to make certain tasks more time efficient. Which might sound a little boring, but because Frank is such a vibrant character, it's really not. There's a lot of humor in it because while Frank did value efficiency, he also loved a good joke. Most of them dad jokes. Some just him being ridiculous. And my favorite moments were when one of the kids, or even Lillian, would take one of his jokes or pranks and throw it back at him. Really gave you a good idea of the family dynamic. The original film Cheaper by the Dozen came out in 1950 and was quickly followed by the sequel based on the sequel book in 1952. And they starred Clifton Webb, Myrna Loy, Jean Crane, and Betty Lynn. Just like in the books, the first film focuses on the time that Frank Sr. was alive, and the second film focuses on the time after his death, when Lillian had to basically manage the entire 12 children herself. Which sounds exhausting. I mean, it sounds exhausting with two, but dang. <laughs> The 1950 movie really sticks close to the events in the book, although I think in some ways Frank is more likable. He's certainly funny in both the book and in the movie, but some of his personality kind of rubbed me the wrong way. For example, he would stop and ask for directions, not follow what he was told, and then blame Lillian for them getting lost. It's written as if this is funny, but man does that sound annoying. The film, however, drops a lot of the annoying things, but keeps in the bulk of Frank's antics, like him teaching the most efficient way to bathe, or filming the kids' tonsil removals. It also does a good job, at least script-wise, of showing that the family shared Frank's sense of humor and was able to banter back with him. There's a little bit of loss there in the young children's performances, but that's kind of understandable. As you may have guessed by my previous descriptions, the 2003 version of Cheaper by the Dozen is insanely different. The family does move to a new house in it, and that's about where the similarities end. If you'll remember, I described the book as sort of a series of vignettes, and the 1950 film is much the same way. The newer film, however, tells a very cohesive story with a very specific message at the end. That's not to say that's better, but it's more a style that we're used to. So the Galbraiths are now the Bakers, and Tom, formerly Frank, is now a football coach played by Steve Martin, who, while always a character, is not quite the same as the real Frank. And the focus is definitely not on efficiency experiments as much as it is on how thin can you stretch the parents of 12 children until it's just too much? Ultimately, the 2003 film's themes are about family taking care of each other, being seen in such a large family, and supporting each other's dreams. All of which can be found in the original text, it's just not quite as cohesive, but that's kind of the difference between fiction and reality, right? So personally, I do think that the newest film is my favorite, but I was always going to be biased because I grew up with it, I've seen it 10 plus times, and I'm just a little bit in love with Bonnie Hunt. But the book is a great quick read, which I recommend, and the original film is worth watching if you can get your hands on it. The text has also been adapted into a stage play and musical, neither of which I've been able to watch in full, but they are on YouTube if you're so inclined. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the different versions of Cheaper by the Dozen, and which kid is your favorite? I'm partial to Tom Welling. Don't forget to subscribe to all the places linked in the info section, and especially our podcast on iTunes. Until next time, I don't think that 12 kids come cheaper by the dozen. It's just a suspicion that I have.